everybody, welcome back to Feedback Loop. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I think, how are you, Joey? <laughs> I think from now on I'm going to try to do like some sort of weird weird voice every time I got to do it. <laughs> I started to do like a like a Swedish chef type of voice there and then I get, kind of gave up, so it, it sounded weird. <laughs> it did not sound like the Swedish chef, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, I gave up before I even started doing it. That's, that's how bad I am. <laughs> uh, but this week... We've been listening to the album Quebec by the band Ween. So, yeah. uh, at my and request, j- just to back up just just a hair, uh, because we didn't introduce ourselves. I'm Jeremy. Oh my God, I'm Joey. And uh, should we redo that? D- no, we're, we're just, it's going in. <laughs> Fuck cool. it. But yeah, Queen, Queen, not Queen. Ween, Quebec. Do you think it's pre- it's probably pronounced Quebec, right? By I, people that live there? Yeah, but I'm American, so... American. I don't know, is it? People... I don't know. <laughs> all you listeners from Canada, is it Quebec or Quebec? Quebec? That K- sounds... Quebec? I don't know. I took <laughs> French for, like, five years, and I still don't understand if it's Quebec <laughs> or Quebec. Well, th- that's... I guess it's a moot point. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We're calling it Quebec because we're Americans. Yeah, and as, as we do, the album was written by two guys from Pennsylvania, so I'm pretty sure they weren't probably thinking about the proper pronunciation whenever they wrote it. So, probably not. Uh, I have a side note: is are, are fans of Ween considered? Do, do they call themselves Weeners? I'm sure they do. Okay. I I would the because crossed my mind, and I was like, that's that's got to be a thing, right? Well, so like the the. The, the two guys that are, are Ween, I mean, there's more backing band, but the two mm-hmm. main guys go by the names Dean and Gene Ween. That right. are their, their stage names. Their real yeah. names are, for Dean Ween, it's Mickey Melchiondo, and Gene Ween is Aaron Freeman. But cool. uh, they call each other Deaner and Geener, so I'm sure their fans call Deaner each other... Deaner and Geener Weener. They, they call themselves Weeners all the time. I'm sure they're just sitting there like, I'm a Weener all day. <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> Well, uh, why why are we doing this album? Why did you choose this album last week, Joey? You know, it just... Just a whim. Yeah, it was really just a whim. I mean, kind of because there was so much out there stuff with uh, Buried Alive, but... Yeah. And this was kind of like, I don't know, Ween... Like, they do... They have a sound, but I feel like they can't really be pinned down too much. Like, they, they mm-hmm. have a lot of variety. So, I was just like, eh, I've been wanting to do this album. I like this album. So, now it's why not do it now yeah it, it was on the list so yeah you, you'd put it on there uh i don't remember when I don't, probably I don't pretty know. early because this album is i like it a lot that's <laughs> what this album is the album is i like it a lot yep <laughs> <laughs> well cool like i feel like with riveting conversation like that it's probably gonna be a long night <laughs> oh shit dude oh that... we skipped i i was i was preemptive we didn't talk about the album art and well, fucking, you know, fucking segue. It, it really is going to be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's as far as album art goes. Like, it's I don't know. I I don't want to say poorly drawn because it's an art style, but it's like an. I feel like it's a recurring theme with albums that you suggest. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I'm that kind of person. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of like an an avant garde, not really, but like a I don't know, intentionally poorly drawn. Sure. Setting of like two people at a cafe and there's some plants in the back or something. They're like sitting I mean, at a table. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it's like poorly drawn. I'd just say that it's not like hyper realistic. I guess that's true. Anything that's not perfect is poor, poorly done, in my opinion. <laughs> in my humble opinion. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you, it could be perfectly like nailing the the art style, which I guess is what you were getting at. But yeah. Like, I don't. Know. I don't it, it, they don't look horrible. Yeah. The, you can clearly tell there's two dudes sitting in a cafe somewhere outside under like an awning that has the album title man i'm i'm sure the internet is just loving our hot takes on a <laughs> on what poorly drawn artwork is yeah that's why they come to this podcast for <laughs> hot takes on cover art <laughs> but now that now that uh now that that's over it is going to be a long night it is it's going to be a long night being yeah. the first track on the album we'll so what you think of it so this track Mm-hmm. It's it's got this kind. It's like some upbeat kind of blues rock, 
kind of thing. It, it almost, I guess, not like super bluesy, but like it, it reminded me a lot of the Ace of Spades by Motorhead. Yeah, where it's just got it's kind of got that driving feel to it, and it's just it's 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 got a lot of like groove and energy to it. Uh, apparently, I did not know this, but it was on the soundtrack to Tony Hawk's Underground Two. Hell yeah, it was. I feel like I played that game, but I don't recall if I played that game, and if I did, I don't recall the song. But the song definitely fits that kind of theme of like the Tony Hawk games because they always had pretty pretty banging soundtracks. Hell yeah, they did. So you think it's banging, do you? Yeah, this track is pretty good. Okay, you know, I'll take pretty good. I'll definitely <laughs> take pretty good. This song, I think I actually heard it before Ocean Man, because I hadn't heard, I didn't hear Ocean Man until the Spongebob movie. Well, I didn't hear Ocean <laughs> Man until the Spongebob movie came out. And, of course, that's in the when, credits. When was that? That was 2004, and this album came out in 2003, but mm-hmm. I heard this song on Tony Hawk's Underground 2, which was, it came out in late 2004 and i got it immediately because i beat the first tony hawks underground like 70 bajillion times so what the implication there is that you did not see the spongebob movie in theaters i did see the spongebob movie in theaters but i think i i don't know you know maybe i did maybe my timeline's just all fucked up but this (laughs) i have not seen that movie for what it's worth i heard this song and actually you say it sounds like the ace of spade by motorhead for Mm -hmm. the first like until I actually went into the soundtrack and like picked out which songs I like on Tony Hawk's Underground 2, I thought this was Motorhead because I was just like <laughs> I was like a ten year old and I was just like, right. it sounds like Motorhead, okay. But yeah, I mean, it, it definitely like their singer does not sound like Lemmy. Yeah, but there, there's a, a similar energy to it and a similar like I, I guess musical style to yeah to all of it. And I was really stupid, so. Yeah, and you not a lot's changed. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> but now I I uh, know how to make a podcast, which means my opinion matters. Do Do you really though? <laughs> nope. But... I don't think either of us actually know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so this song, yeah, it has it's just like super kick ass, like in the in the way that it's just like raw, and I mean like good. I guess raw, <laughs> raw rock sound, raw and good, <laughs> raw and good. That's all I need for music. With two descriptors uh, for the song, but so like I used to listen to this song whenever I wanted to get like pumped up before I had ever listened to this whole album mm-hmm. all the way through. But like I knew it was Ween after I got to the age where I was like, okay, this is not Motorhead. This is Ween. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like listen to the song to get super pumped up, and uh, like the lyrics are just. Like, I want to say it's a party song, but this is so much more. Like, this is like... <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Because I wrote, literally, it's a song about partying hard. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is a song about partying hard, but this is, like, a hard party where you're gonna, like, you're gonna, you're gonna suffer. You're gonna bleed. Like, don't call your mother. Don't call your priest. Don't call your doctor. You gotta call the police. Yeah. Cause, well, uh, so, so I took that to, to imply that there's some violent rough sex happening, as oh, well shit. as drugs. See... I don't know so much about the sex part, but the the drugs. I mean, part. It says take off your coat. It's gonna be a long long night. You yeah, know? but don't if... don't call your priest. Don't call your mom because like they don't want to hear about you fucking. But yeah. I'm gonna fuck you up with with my the weenie with my well, wiener. You know, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. <laughs> that's that's what I took it to mean. I I don't know. Like I just took it to like you're gonna party. Some crazy shit's gonna happen. There's probably gonna be a bunch of fights and. You I mean, can... literally, the, 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 the refrain of the song is, it's going to be a long night, it's going to be a cat fight, it's going to be a gangbang, so... Oh, you know, that's, that's, that's true. Just, that's just the way I took it, I guess, but... Well, that's the way he said it. As well. <laughs> I mean, I, gangbanging can mean a, a handful of things. Maybe it's just my mind's in the gutter. Well, I don't know. It was just like, I guess, the first time I heard it, I heard gangbang. And I knew what a gangbang was. Because the internet was a thing before I was 10. But, uh, <laughs> uh, like, I just kind of thought of it as, like, a big fight. Like, it's yeah. like, like a street brawl of some yeah, sort. Yeah, if, so, if someone's a gangbanger, you know, that means that they're, like, yeah. in a gang, right? They're, that's kind of like an alternate term for being affiliated with a gang, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe all that would have changed if I would have just been given Zoloft at a young age. <laughs> yeah, you would have mellowed out, hopefully. Yeah, probably would have. Just a little bit. Track number two, Zoloft. Z-O-L-O-F-T. Boom. And, this uh, is how you spell it. Yeah. <laughs> so, we talk about 
the the rock sound the compared it to Motorhead maybe too much, but nah. uh, <laughs> it this is like not that at all. It changes a <laughs> lot. <laughs> like yeah, I mean, really, the first song is I feel like an outlier. <laughs> it is for sure. The, but what what do you think about this one? So Zoloff comes in. It's, it's got like some some drum machine kind of booping away at the beginning, and then it finds its beat, and then it kind of becomes this like almost bossa nova kind of feeling track Hell yeah. with some like wavy synths and, and some vocal samples and stuff. Uh, it it obviously caught me off guard the first time I listened to it <laughs> because it's like wow this is literally nothing like the prior track. Um, I don't love this track. I don't hate it. It's just kind of it's just kind of there on this album throughout. Like comparing it to the grand scheme of the full album, the song doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I think it's kind of weird and mellow, and I, I didn't really have a lot of expectations for Ween going into a, the album yeah. because I'd only heard Ocean Man, and obviously that's kind of a weird song. So this this didn't like strike me as like out of place per se, but it's not something that like it's it's not what I wanted after hearing it's going to be a long night <laughs> and, and just coming into this. It, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's a weird spot for me. Yeah. There, I will say I did listen to a whole lot of, it's going to be a long night on its own. Typically yeah. when I'm listening to this album, it's all the way through. So there's not a lot of like me listening to single tracks off of it. So, because I feel like the tracks don't really, not that they don't lend themselves to that, but hmm. I don't know. Like, I wouldn't listen to a lot of the tracks singularly. Right. I mean, a few of them, like, I guess I would sometimes, but it's it's not like, I wouldn't, most of these songs, I wouldn't put them on a playlist to, like, listen to with a bunch of other songs. If I'm going to listen to these songs, I'm going to listen to them only with other, like, Ween songs, I guess. Interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that at the end, because <laughs> I feel the polar opposite. Oh, fuck! But uh, yeah, lyrically, this one kind of running. I know we kind of glossed over in the, the prior track that the, the partying hard feeling in, involves drugs as yeah. well. There were some drug references. This one's called So Loft, and it's about like popping some antidepressants and kind of just floating off, potentially abusing Zoloft as, as a way to just feel good kind of a thing. But uh, that's just basing that off of the prior track where he's just like talking about just like slamming cocaine and shit like that. Yeah. So. This one, it's, yeah, this uh, this song always gave me, like, lounge vibes. Yeah. And, uh, like, the lyrics, it's, I don't know, like, I don't know if this is too, like, over-sherry and stuff, but whenever people I was... People love it when other people overshare on the internet, so yeah. it's, people are going to be all about it. <laughs> so, like, whenever I was younger, I don't know, I took all, like... ADD medicines, like depression medicine, like stuff like that, like mood stabilizers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Several times, tried different ones. And this song always struck me as like, I don't know, whenever you take those things, if coming from someone who's like, I guess was depressed or so, like, any, I feel like a lot of people will t tell this sentiment. Whenever you take mood stabilizers or something, it feels like it's creating kind of an illusion or like a separate version of yourself that you don't necessarily like, or yeah. that, that I don't know, like for me taking them, it's like th your normal feeling, which is not normal. It's like depression or manic or just whatever you, whatever, I don't know, I guess mental disorder. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you have, it's, that's your normal. And whenever you take something, to kind of, uh, I guess, quote unquote, fix that or whatever. Yeah. It it kind of mellows you out, and it's not you're not used to that, or you become accustomed to like these highs and these lows that you just can't reach anymore. So it right. it makes you feel super weird and not like yourself. And I yeah, feel like... because you're like you're you're conscious of what's happening, right? Like yeah. you're, you're kind of like self aware uh, on like an extreme level of like. You're kind of giving up control, I guess. Not that I've experienced this because I have not taken any like uh, antidepressants or any drugs like that for altering my mood. But like, I would imagine that like maybe this is just me as a control freak. But like, I feel like it'd be kind of scary to like 
have a pill that literally changes who you are and how you think and how you act and stuff and being aware of that as it's happening yeah kind of freak me out it's i i mean it works for a lot of people like yeah de- but and the thing is it gets framed a lot of the time as i said quote unquote fix it doesn't fix you all it does is give you the tools to if you put in the effort be able to more aptly work through what issues that you have Mm -hmm. so like that's what it's supposed to do you can't take it and it just fixes you but you kind of have to like puts you in a position to to maybe help fix yourself a little bit yeah but it and it does that by changing how you view the world and everything and i always felt like this song because during the verses he's singing in a very like calm like nice voice at the beginning Mm -hmm. and then at the end of the verse it's like a super high pitched distorted almost unintelligible voice yeah that's like the the nice voice is saying like give me that zola like give me that z o l o f t give me a grip make me love me sucking them down i'm happy can feel it inside it's making me smile and then that weird distorted voice comes in with the realize that the sky is not made of gold don't disguise the nature of your soul like it's like right it's kind of fighting back yeah, it's like whatever facade that the drug put up or whatever new version of yourself the drug put up, it's kind of complacent and whatever. And then the real you is like peeking out and it's like, it's not real. It's not like, it's, yeah, it's just a disguise. Fixed. Yeah, and it just not like, I don't want this to come off like taking like antidepressants or mood stabilizers or anything is bad because whatever help helps you, yeah, get it. But it's just, I feel like a lot of people take them and don't have the expect, like their expectations aren't met or whatever they expected is not what happens. And right. then they end up getting that duality feeling. And I feel like the song does a pretty good job of that. Like for yeah. me, it's just, it's it's a vibe that I like to listen to. It 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 hits a chord with the feeling I felt before, I guess. Yeah, it's it's got to be like oddly relatable in like a very niche and specific way that yeah, that like I, I guess doesn't occur often in music. Yeah, it's that was a long time of me just saying things. So. No, that was good. <laughs> it was good. I, I think maybe maybe I'll I'll just chill out. You know, go go find some heroin to shoot up and you know have some sort of transnormal celebration. <laughs> Holy shit, Jeremy! Did I really drive you to that? <laughs> Track number three: transnormal celebration. Which uh, nice. it's a hell of a song title. Yeah, it really is. And honestly, like, this isn't necessarily my favorite track on the album, but whenever I hear the name Quebec or I think about this album, this is the first song that pops into my head. Yeah, I can totally see that. This one has, like, it's got some cool, like, lightly distorted guitar. It's got a nice groove to it. And this song, I wrote in my notes, is closer to what I expected Ween to sound like, even though I didn't really have, like, strong... uh, expectations from Wayne, but this song like is 100% like in line with what I was expecting, I guess, where it's just this kind of like vibey rock jam kind of a thing going on. Yeah, it's definitely like, they get labeled a lot as like psychedelic rock yeah. type stuff, and I feel like that's definitely, like this, this song shows that a lot, and I like it, I mean, it's a cool yeah. sound, it's not like my favorite song on the album, and my favorite songs on the album don't sound too much like this <laughs> yeah but it i like the sound so it's pretty it's a pretty cool sound it's a pretty cool song i like it as well even though it's also not my favorite track on the album oh well i can't wait to figure out what it is uh this one like i don't i don't have too many notes for it just because it is in the grand scheme of this album it's it's a more like you've probably heard something that sounds kind of like it before yeah like it it kind of has like not the super distortion of it's going to be a long night not the lounge feeling of uh Zoloft but this one's kind of like not quite as distorted it's like a lightly distorted almost like a classic rock style guitar yeah. like feeling i don't know like i i compare them to Pink Floyd a lot in this this song mm-hmm. isn't necessarily like that but if you can think of like the guitar sound and the kind of instrumentation yeah. i feel like this goes along with it I agree with you, and Pink Floyd was always, like, in the back of my mind when listening to a lot of their songs, but I never actually, like, wrote it down because I felt like it was kind of, 
I, I felt like it was too far of a stretch, but yeah, I definitely agree with that. There are a lot of like, may, maybe not composition structure wise, but like a lot of the sounds and stuff yeah. definitely could be in a Pink Floyd kind of song. Lyrically. Actually, yeah. Lyrically. Sorry. Were you going to just interrupt you? No, I was going to say the same thing you said. So I was, I was just, just like, yeah. Lyrically. <laughs> yeah. Lyrically. <laughs> Uh, this one is more drugs you know it's called transdermal celebration this time he, he's shooting something into his vein and tripping out while talking about weapons of mass destruction and, yeah. and bombs going off and shit dude yeah it's so i always thought the song was just about drugs and i thought mark a was not mark a i thought it was mark a like some land in the middle east or something like oh i don't know if that's a place but i that's just it that's just what came well, you thought it was yeah and so whenever i was like actually looking into the lyrics i was just like holy shit this is like a nuclear detonation like there's <laughs> bombs going off like this shit's yeah. crazy and one lyric uh dropping their like he's talking about jets flew in formation i could see them dropping their crustaceans dropping their shells like a like a seashell yeah but talking about bombs it was just like a cool little it's very clever yeah and it's talking about crustaceans, which may or may not be a theme that they talk about on their other album. Uh, the Mollusk. The, the Mollusk. Yep, that's it, the one. It's I, definitely I, I didn't know thing. what it was called, but it was something related. God so damn it, Jeremy. It could be a callback or throw throw forward. I don't, I don't know. Was this before or after uh, the Mollusk? This was after. Okay. Yeah. So maybe they just, they just like kind of nautical-themed lyrics and, and ideas. Of course it had to be the mollusk because uh I I don't want to say the mollusk was directly inspirational to SpongeBob but I have read several interviews where uh the like Stephen Hillenburg I I don't know if it was necessarily Stephen Hillenburg but people that worked on early SpongeBob mm -hmm. like were inspired by Ween they were yeah. wieners yeah they were wieners at least <laughs> and liked the album the mollusk so well, I'm a little disappointed that I'm, I'm not listening to The Mollusk, but maybe I'll check it out afterwards. Well, you know, if I don't know how you felt about all of this album, but I feel like you probably feel the same way about The Mollusk. So. <laughs> you think that it would make me feel like I was more among my tribe with probably. The Mollusk? I it think was, if, if, I were, if I were to think of you listening to The Mollusk, I would think, man, Jeremy is really among his tribe right now. <laughs> That's crazy, because the next track is called Among His Tribe. Holy shit! And guess what? It sounds completely different than the fucking tracks before it. It is. This one's got... It's like a, it's like a folksy, kind of like Simon and Garfunkel uh, feel to it, which I don't I don't mind. It's, yeah. it's obviously... It's a little bit... feels a bit more modern than a lot of the old, like, Simon and Garfunkel stuff. That's kind of where I pinned it to. Uh, this track has a lot of, like, progression, and it kind of, like, unhinges over time, and just kind of, like, I imagine it's maybe tropey, I guess, but like seeing like a building, like or the inside of like a house, and then the walls just kind of like float away, like they separate from each other, and it reveals like this backdrop of just like outer space kind of a thing that's just kind of drifting open behind the scenes. Yeah, I definitely feel that. Like, I don't know. It's it's just they do a lot with like background noises in their songs, yeah. where there's a lot of like stuff going on in the background, and this. I don't know. It kind of gives it an eerie feeling. Like you said, it does feel like you kind of like float out into openness. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, given my, the new revelation that I had, that Transdermal Celebration was talking about like dropping bombs and shit. There's mm -hmm. a point in this song where like a siren comes in or like, yeah. it sounds like a warning siren and it's just like, oh shit, is like, he among his tribe because the world was destroyed in the last song or something? Yeah, it like, set the world back to the fucking prehistoric era. Yeah, and outside of, like, outside of that, this song, really at its base, if you just look at it, it's just about continuation of a species. It's just like talking about, like, ah, oh, you're sitting by a fire with your tribe and teaching the youth about the ways of survival. Like, yeah, it's very, but, like, tribal and, and ritualistic. Yeah, what? But like, whenever you think about it against like that backdrop, I was just like, "Why are they a tribe? Are they a tribe?" <laughs> but then I think about who who they are, who Ween is, and I'm like, "It's probably just a fucking song." Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not about that. It's probably yeah. just just a thing. 
but Which, you know, uh, good, good on them, I suppose. Like, yeah. it's, it's no shame in not having a a through line. I know a lot of the albums that we we talk about do, or at least we try to create some sort of through line with the tracks. But um, it doesn't have to be that way if it's not, you know. Yeah, and like it makes sense that there's usually like a general theme. Yeah. I guess, but I don't know. It's I feel like there's somewhat of a theme on this album, but then it like gets chopped up sometimes. Yeah, it's. It's kind of interesting, and that coupled with the the music changing so drastically, at least on these first few tracks, it, it there's not like a unified sound, of yeah. it, which kind of makes it harder to, at least for me, to rationalize as like a full album, kind of tied together kind of a thing. But uh, maybe that's just me being pedantic about music. Maybe it is, but uh, isn't that just all that we're doing right now? So. That's true. There are, just, <laughs> there are just so many people in the neighborhood that are like shitting on me that I don't. I, I lost my train of thought after I got. You don't even out. live in a neighborhood, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> the neighborhood, the cultural neighborhood of music review podcasts. <laughs> oh my god, are we in that neighborhood? I don't. I think we're like outside of the picket fence. Like, let me in. Let me in. <laughs> yeah. On second thought, I don't. I don't know if they're very good people in the neighborhood anyway. So. Yeah. And also, there's not that many good people in track number five. <laughs> Which I is guess. called so, so many people in the neighborhood. Side note, before we even talk about any of this, my daughter loves this song. <laughs> that I can see that. I mean, I, I feel like any child of yours would have to love this song. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like simple. I mean, I guess skipping ahead to, to the lyrics, like, there, there's not a lot of, like, deep or complicated lyrics. Yeah. In most of the song. Granted, th- there's a section of the song that just kind of goes off the, the, the rails. <laughs> most of the song is just a dude saying so many people in the neighborhood over and over again. And then saying, yeah. I don't know if they're very good people. <laughs> kind of a thing. So it's, it's simple. It's catchy. It makes sense that, it, that a young child would, would enjoy them. Yeah. it's Since since we're already on the lyrics, I'm just going to like put out my two cents about it. And we sure. can loop around back. Uh, so this song, to me, like talking about going back to Zoloft where it talks about like that altered sense of self, that Mm -hmm. facade, whatever that it can put on you. Yeah. Whenever I think of neighborhood, whenever I hear the word neighborhood, I think of like, this is probably just me, but I think of like a fifties cul-de-sac, like (laughs) the perfectly manicured lawn, whatever. So I think about all the people who were on like drugs back then where it was like, it seemed like everybody was taking like Valium or something. To yeah, just kind of dissociating. Yeah, and it just makes me think, like, like he's saying so many people in the neighborhood don't know if they're very good people. Like, everybody's got their faces that they put on to be out in public, and it's just a song about who is everybody behind that face or behind closed doors or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't have that answer. I did not take any lyrical uh, <laughs> analysis away from the song because it was just kind of... It's kind of out there. It's kind of kind of weird, kind of simple, kind of... I don't know. The the music... I, I guess looping back to that. It's kind of a strange, bleepy song, and then it just dissolves into chaos and noise in I, what Genius has labeled as the verse. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't interpret any of those lyrics in any sort of musical faction, fashion. And I feel like the song is a bit too long. I feel like it could have just been like a one minute interlude kind of a thing, condensing uh, the the theme of the song. But it, it goes on for like three and a half minutes or something. I will agree with you. I definitely think the song, like, it could, it definitely could have been cut down to just one chorus and one quote unquote verse. Like, yeah. it same to be said about another song later. Yeah. Uh, but I think I agree with you. I don't mind that it's longer because I don't know, I guess, I don't know if it's, there's times where I think about like the way I look at music and I don't know if it's me having low standards or me just like not caring that people like, I mean, obviously they made this song three and a half minutes because they right. just wanted to make it three and a half minutes. So like, I'm not, I don't care that they did. But right. if I were to make it, I wouldn't have made it this long. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's fair. And I think I don't think that they would be offended by such a thing. Yeah. 
Well, I hope they wouldn't because uh, our review method is tried and true <laughs> to not <laughs> to not offend any artists. That's true. We've never said a bad thing about any artist. Zach Hill. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> tried and true is track number six as Boom. Joey masterfully segue. We're killing these segues tonight, man. I think we're just getting better. You know, we've done something that, for a whole year. <laughs> I, I don't think. It has been almost a year. This is episode 51. So uh, the, the final episode of our first year comes out next week. Oh my god. Which is Well, next week for the people listening to this, which yeah. is in two weeks from, from us now. Uh, and then we, we, we might do a, a special thing to kick off year two of Feedback Loop. But don't hold us to it. Don't hold us to it, because we have not discussed it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but tried and true, track number six, this one kind of goes back to that kind of classic rock feel. Uh, it's acoustic for the most part got like a psychedelic solo section but it's just yeah. kind of like a it's it's got that like i don't know it, it kind of like this and a handful of other songs on the album just kind of capture like an almost like eagles kind of feeling yeah uh, acoustic rock kind of thing to it or like tom petty maybe in some aspects but just that kind of era of classic rock is where my mind went yeah they definitely get like a classic rock vibe going on i mean especially with like I don't know. I don't want to say quite Americana, but it kind of yeah. is. Like, that acoustic, there's, like, a little acoustic melody that goes throughout, like, the, the verse and everything. And it's just, it does sound kind of psychedelic, kind of Americana, but it's, it's, I don't, it's very classic rock. Like, I could definitely right. get that feeling from it. And he does this, I don't know, like, weird thing with his voice on a lot of tracks <laughs> like this. Yeah. Where it's kind of what he does in Ocean Man, where yeah. it's like a very, it like he has to have some sort of effect on it. It's a very low kind of. I don't of, know if he does. I feel like I feel like it's just like something he can do with his voice, and he kind of leans into it. Man, I'm glad he leans into it though, because it's just like it's cool. It's cool, <laughs> but it's agree. it's just like a super low bassy tone type of thing. Um, yeah, but other than like, I don't know it. I, I guess there is one part where it changes, like, the acoustic line. Kind of, like, it spa the song spaces out for a second. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just, like, I don't know, like, it's, like, the song just caught a glimpse of something in its eye and then turned its attention to that for a second and then turned back. But yeah. whenever it turned back, the acoustic line was now being played by a sitar. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even notice that, but, the, but yeah. there That's kind of, like, a... Uh kind of a recurring thing in a handful of their songs that I noticed on this album is that they have those kind of like moments of distraction where the song just kind of briefly changes and then changes back and, and it feels different afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's got, it's got a nice little bass groove, but other than that, I didn't really have too much else about it. Yeah. Other, other than for the lyrics, before we even talk <laughs> about the lyrics, there's one of my favorite ween... <laughs> at the end of the chorus he's talking about like i don't know about uh somebody seeing 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 the light in somebody and somebody looking into his soul and then he asks could you smell my whole life and yeah. it's just the way he sings the it, pause. It's, just, it's just funny <laughs> yeah yeah i mean obviously, it's clearly intentional to make like a, a funny butthole joke kind of yeah. a thing but yeah, I, I, I don't know i for for the song I, I'm not 100% sure what the song is about because it, it gets kind of weird and metaphorical and stuff, but I feel like he was talking about kind of having a one-night stand or having, like, a recurring fuck buddy potentially while on drugs because, in my mind, a lot of this album is related back to using drugs because mm -hmm. a lot of the songs are clearly about it. So the ones that aren't clearly about it, I'm still kind of, like, assuming in, in that vein. But, yeah, he, he's talking because he's, like... He talks about, uh, like, waking up alone and then kind of spacing out, maybe he's getting high or whatever, and then it's kind of like he's fading back into it and realizing that he has someone there with him, and now that they're they're like back in love or whatever, and it's just kind of like a weird cycle, so that kind of made me think of like a, a one-night stand or like a recurring kind of a sex thing. See, I could see where you get that. And that but I'm wrong. <laughs> and that could be right. I've always, just from having listened to, listened to this album quite a few times... I feel like this is, like, he's at a point in using drugs where, like, 
I feel like the other person with him isn't using. And right. it's like he's in a relationship with a person that's not using drugs. And this is like him kind of coming in and out of sobriety with that person or like realizing, I don't know, just having felt this personally, like the vibe I get from this song is like the feeling that you get whenever you're with a person that you care deeply about. They are sober and you are very much not. <laughs> yeah. And you're, you're like expecting them because they feel what you've, they typically feel what you feel most of the time. But then right now you're feeling such like out there emotions because of your state that mm -hmm. you're like, are you feeling this right now? And they're just, they're like, as a normal person, like what the fuck's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, th I don't think that's terribly far off the sentiment that I was getting at. Yeah. And that there's like, this, this kind of, like, state of being with someone and then leaving that kind of closeness and then kind of reverting and coming back down kind of thing as you get high and as you sober up or whatever. Yeah, it's, uh... I definitely know that it's not all happy-colored marbles in whatever relationship's going on here. <laughs> there are so, some unhappy-colored marbles. There are some... some... <laughs> what would an unhappy color be? Like, a brown, perhaps? Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like bright colors are happy colors, right? It's so like a bright red, blue, yellow, you know. Maybe. I don't know. Like green, but like a darker, maybe like a purple. Well, I don't know. I, think, well, yeah, I guess purple's not really happy. Purple's, is, yeah, I don't know. Purple is the color of royalty, so I'm sure anybody who's not royalty at, at one point. <laughs> if you were like, a, like purple. Yeah, if you were like a medieval peasant and you saw purple, you're probably like, <laughs> ah, fuck, the king's coming. Fuck the purples. <laughs> Fuck the purples. <laughs> Track number seven, Happy Colored Marbles. We're right into it. This one has some some xylophone and like a cheesy organ kind of sound over like a pretty simple beat. There's a lot of like vocal effects and like modulation and warbling that kind of make it feel like a, a weird twisted children's song to me. Yeah. And it has like a, th towards the end of the song, there's this super faded guitar that's like super heavily distorted and blown out and it sounds like a fucking foghorn. And at first I thought it was just like a, a foghorn sound effect, but you can hear them like sliding in notes and stuff. So I'm like, that's kind of cool to get that kind of effect from a guitar, just like playing a couple of notes and making it sound super distant. So it's, it's like a ship is like on the horizon rolling in through the fog or something. And then the song kind of fucking falls apart. And there's <laughs> this weird, like industrial almost guitar solo to it at the end that just like snapped me out of whatever vibe the song was going for. So yeah, so weird. So that foghorn sound you're describing, I described it as, have you ever seen those videos of the sky trumpets? No. Like, okay, so it's this phenomenon where uh, people, they don't know what's causing the sound because according to the government or whatever, whoever they ask, it's not like a test or anything. Mm -hmm. But like people out in the middle of fucking nowhere will just randomly hear these like sounds that sound almost exactly like that sound yeah. coming just from the sky. And they're like, what the fuck is that? And that's like the feeling that I get. So it like aliens, it, man. Yeah, it's probably aliens. <laughs> they're aliens playing trumpets in the sky, man. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's other than me adding that little tidbit of fucking conspiracy information. <laughs> I, I I pretty much was right there with you. It's just like the song, it does just fall apart and it sounds like industrial, weird, creepy, like everything's melting. But, uh. Yeah, which is strange because the song title is Happy Colored Marbles and the song is kind of not happy at the end. Yeah, I feel like that's going along with, I don't know, the through line that is that fakeness or the face or the facade, whatever yeah. that gets put up. Cause it's like, I mean, the first two lines are most people are not okay, but they're taking their siestas in the sun. Like yeah. you're not feeling okay internally, but outside you're just like, whatever, lay it on a beach, taking a nap, whatever. Yeah. This one, I, I kind of got the vibe of that. That was talking about how people talk about change or people want change but they're too content or sedated maybe by drugs yeah. to enact the change that they want. So they're just kind of like existing and complaining about the world state and just continuing to not do anything about it because they're lazy. Because that's what they want. I don't know who they are. The government. The, the government. government. Or the aliens that are puppeting the government. 
or the government of the aliens that's puppeting the aliens that's that are puppeting our puppeting, government. Yeah, that are puppeting oh, us. Oh my god! Puppets all the way down. <laughs> Damn, everybody's puppet. Everybody's puppets. <laughs> I want Shit. that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Man, there's some times where I say things and I'm like, it works right then. But man, <laughs> I, I probably sound like a stupid person. I mean, we, we all do at some point. But hey there, Fancy Pants. It gets better on this album with track number eight. Fancy Pants? Isn't that a song by yeah, uh, Fancy Pants. Jonathan Colton? Maybe. Actually, I haven't listened to a whole lot of Jonathan Colton. I've not listened to as much as I want to listen to. Well, but... listen to Mr. Fancy Pants because that is a song by Jonathan Colton. Well, I've already listened to Hey There, Fancy Pants by Ween, which is the next track on this album. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that instead. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. <laughs> this one, I wrote, what an apt title for the sound of this song. Because <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a, a tiny t- Tim feeling track where it's yeah. like upbeat and happy and like it, it feels like it would fit in like an episode of a child's cartoon if it wasn't for the lyrics yeah. that, that happen. I really like like musical like layout of the song the structure and like all, all the sounds and stuff it's very like upbeat and cheery which i usually don't go for but there's a lot of cool like transitions and layers and stuff in this song that that keep it interesting yeah definitely like this if it were done any other way i feel like i wouldn't like this song but i do like this song uh it just it comes off in this and this one this one's actually short enough i feel like for the idea yeah. that they had for this song it's only two minutes long it, it's right, it's the right amount of time. Like whenever I listen to this song, the way he sings, the way the music sounds, and everything, it sounds like some sort of like old timey radio program, or something, where it's like before they had TV, this would have been like the the TV show, but it, it's on the yeah. radio or something. Except for like you said, the lyrics. The lyrics are not happy and whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, they kind of are. So yeah. what what I took away from the song is that. It, he's just trying trying to cheer people up that are not currently cheery that they're they're kind of depressed or whatever and they're saying hey like cheer the fuck up like life is fun and exciting haha enjoy it <laughs> kind of thing yeah it's uh i the first verse is pretty like i don't know yeah it's just like cheer up come on and then i don't know it, whenever he says, hey there, sour grapes, and then the song kind of goes, down in the dumps, long in the face. It's just yeah, like... It, the, the music cuts off. It's like, da-da, 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 da-da. You're like, okay, what's happening? Drinking <laughs> down your dinner all alone. It's like, yeah. okay, please. <laughs> it, it, it's like a, it's like a bad, like carnival clown or something like just the, just the setting of like him like he starts off all friendly and ha, ha 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 and then he realizes you're not cheering up so he gets more aggressive with trying to make you happy kind of a thing to the point where it's kind of like a horror movie yeah it's it's definitely like that but it's nice it's a nice little two minute trip yeah it, it, it fits in strangely even though it's pretty different from a lot of the other tracks musically like it, it does not feel out of place on this album to me yeah, and you know, if it went on for any longer than two minutes, I'd I'd be telling the person who was driving this ship, you know, <laughs> Captain, turn around and take me home. Oh my god. Expert level. Track number <laughs> nine, Captain. I think this is my favorite song on the album. Hell yeah. Or or one of them. Really from like this point out in the album, just just aces all the yeah. way down. I yeah. Think. The second half of this album is really where it shines. I agree completely. Uh, this song, I immediately clung to the vibe too. It kind of stuck out to me. It reminded me of like a video game soundtrack, but I can't place what game it was, and I didn't put enough thought into it over the week to like figure it out. But uh, maybe maybe that's why I like this one so much. It has kind of like a mysterious feel, but it's also kind of like surfy and, and beachy, and it's just kind of like I don't know. It's just kind of like almost like like you're watching a Quentin Tarantino movie. Like watching Pulp Fiction or something, where it's just kind of like vibey, like the scene I guess specifically where like John Travolta is driving and he's high, yeah, and he's just like driving around town or something, and he's just catching that vibe. It kind of makes me feel that way. Man, I like that comparison because I feel the same way. Like it's this was one of the ones where like I kind of had a slight Pink Floyd comparison, yeah. In just the overall general vibe of the song. Like, not that it necessarily sounds exactly like a Pink Floyd song, or that it sounds 
like composition wise, like it has the progginess of Pink mm-hmm. Floyd or anything, but it just it kind of hits that same like spacey ethereal type vibe, where it's I don't know you feel like you're just you're you're just feeling it whenever you're listening to it. Just feeling it now, Captain Krabs. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Back to SpongeBob. <laughs> All everything. This whole album is just about SpongeBob. We've been fooling ourselves. <laughs> Uh, but like the lyrics, as far as you're talking about John Travolta on his dr- drug trip, yeah, the lyrics on this one make me think of somebody on a bad trip who's just like, whoever's at the wheel of this machine, please take me back to the state of mind that I was in before. <laughs> yep, I got the exact same notes. It's so. it's just like, I don't know. I've I've I'm not. I don't know. All you people out there, before you start thinking I'm like some super experienced <laughs> person, I, I'm not like extremely experienced with like higher psychedelics and everything. Right. Like it's it's been a it's been a thing in my life before, but it's not like. But I've never had a bad trip, so I don't know what that's like. Right. But yeah, that's the thing that like kind of threw me off, and and I was thinking about it because I also noted that lyrically it seems like it's about a bad trip. But musically, I feel like it's kind of the opposite, where you're just kind of like vibing out and just having a good time. Yeah, so I, I thought maybe I was I was wrong, or maybe it was an intentional like distinction to where there's that dissonance between the lyrics and, and the music. Yeah, I I kind of think that's probably what it, like I don't know if I can use what experience I do have to put my mind put myself in the mind of somebody who's had a bad trip because like. I've watched somebody have a bad trip before. Right. And I feel like the kind of disconnect between the music and the lyrics could make sense there. And I don't know. I know that uh, Dean Ween, who, who is the singer, like the reason part of a part, a driving force in the reason why they kind of like took a break for a long time was because he needed to get help for like drug addiction and stuff. So yeah. I don't think it's too far fetched to put that in here, especially whenever the lyrics are just so much. Captain, turn around and take me home on a on a on an album that has heavily a lot referenced of drug references. Drugs. Yeah. Well, maybe he, the captain, can turn us around and take us back to Chocolate Town. So oh we can yeah. Discuss the next track on the album. Track track ten. It's ten, yeah. right? Ten, still counting good. Hell yeah. I can <laughs> number, man. We can all number. Chocolate Town, track number ten. This one almost, it has like a borderline country vibe to it. Yeah. I, it's... I, I, I do like that it was kind of like a smooth transition to follow up Captain. And like, it, it's still like a mellow song. Instead of, I, I was kind of like anticipating it to have like an ab- abrupt change of tone to like something completely different because that's kind of how a lot of this album is where there's just a lot of like strange songs following up other songs that are that are like more chill in nature but it, it doesn't happen here and it's kind of a nice transition to kind of get you to the rest of the album after captain and since i like captain so much i appreciate it that they like gave it its space instead of just like abruptly dropping you somewhere else yeah yeah i i i definitely like kind of how they transition all their songs in the second half of the album yeah just it it seems like stuff kind of flows pretty nicely together it does have like a country vibe that border borders on like americana Mm -hmm. just but it's still got kind of like the little psychedelic rock type it's it's a little weenie yeah it's a little weenie it's a little weenie (laughs) like a little tiny one a little tiny weenie (laughs) but uh i for the longest time straight up just thought this song was about like doing it in the butt <laughs> i figured that was that was that was coming i mean we both listen to tenacious d like, yeah but it's, it's not not unheard of for for songs to be about butt sex <laughs> yeah and i mean the chorus is making time breaking ground sail brown bay to chocolate town like yeah <laughs> it, but I mean, looking, maybe maybe it's a double meaning i think it probably is kind of like the can you smell my whole life thing yeah but uh, this song, at least Gene Ween said the song is about Hershey, Pennsylvania, which is known for Hershey bars, otherwise known as Chocolate Town. They're from pretty close to Hershey, Pennsylvania. So I think, yeah. like he said, they're just talking about the town. And apparently, 
brown is just like an aesthetic that they try to like put in like brown is like it's just like a conceptual thing it's like the whenever they think about like interesting music stuff it's like or just like the kind of general vibe that they're supposed to get they like describe it as brown so i wonder if it, that's more than a ween thing because uh wasn't there a track on the uh the hella album that had that was brown something um there, i feel like there was i'm gonna i'm gonna look yeah. it up um but yeah i, I don't know this one it, it's you said it, it was just describing the the town of pennsylvania genius says that it was written after uh, a sometime band member named Meadween was detained <laughs> by the police for trying to buy drugs so i kind of ran with that and with that filter it kind of plays out as like a three act story where the first two verses it seems like he's the singer is trying to buy drugs yeah right the second or the, i guess the third verse which is after the first chorus is the second act where he gets caught taking drugs and he gets he gets sent to prison or trying to buy drugs so he gets sent to, to jail or whatever for holding and then the third track or the third act i mean after the second chorus is just him like he got out of jail and now he's actually doing drugs again and he's, he's feeling good about himself well, at least he's feeling good. Aren't we all? No. No, we're not. Oh. <laughs> Most people are not. That's true. He, he, he does refer to that uh, earlier in the album. But, you know, if, if some people are feeling good, then I, I don't want it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm distracted because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to look at this hella thing. I know. Yeah, it was they, so- they had a track called Brown Metal. It was track yeah. number six on the album. I only remembered it after you said it because I remember being like, Rust, it sounds rusty, it has an industrial sound, yeah, brown yeah. metal. Boom. So I, I wonder if brown is more of like a, it's probably like an under, maybe like an underground thing, or maybe it's just a coincidence, but yeah, maybe, maybe there's some, some deep conspiracy there that we're, that we're stumbling onto with brown being like a kind of a state of mind kind of thing. Or maybe hell is just really good. And... I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I don't. I don't want it. I'll tell you that much. I don't want anything to do with Hella. Well, you know what I do want. Track eleven, <laughs> titled "I Don't Want It." <laughs> You're sending me conflicting. I'm getting some some mixed signals here, but uh, I'll talk about it. Track number eleven. This one's Did... another like. Uh... No, 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 not again. <laughs> this is the pain of trying to record a podcast virtually. virtually. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Track number eleven. I don't want it. It's another slow and calm, kind of like rock-ish track, where it's not like super rocky and upbeat. I feel like I've actually heard this track before, and I'm not sure where I would have heard it from. I don't know where you would have heard it from either, but it has like... I don't know. It's... To me, it kind of gave me uh, like... Oasis vibes, but I haven't listened to enough Oasis to really confidently make that comparison. Yeah. And I feel like that's going to make some people very mad that I said that. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've definitely not listened to enough Oasis to, to I think I've only heard one song by Oasis, and that's Wonderwall. So. <laughs> but it's just kind of got that, like, kind of soft, sad rock type vibe. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's Ma- sad, sad boy rock. Sad boy rock. It's 2003 sad boy music. <laughs> I thought this album came out in 2004. No. Yeah. To, this album came out in 2003. The uh, oh, the SpongeBob movie was 2004. Yeah, and Tony Hawk's oh, Tony Hawk. Too. Okay, the years both got, of them got mixed up in my brains. Boom, and the Mollusk came out in 1997. Boom, stop dropping dates in my brain. I don't, <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> but this, yeah, I mean, outside of like the uh, the like soft sad rock, I don't have. I like this song a lot. It's like yeah. the guitar is super soft and like it does a lot of like the super strummy chords that you'd hear from that. Like I like it. And uh, Dean, like you can tell this is supposed to be like a poignant song because mm-hmm. Dean is not doing any sort of voice. He's just singing right. in it, which is like not like him for the rest, <laughs> of the, the rest of the album. Yeah. It's pretty good though. Lyrically, the, the the reason Joey says it's supposed to be a poignant song is that it was written about uh, Gene's divorce. Yeah. I guess he, he divorced his, his wife at some point, or she divorced him, 
this is maybe more apt from what the vibe that the song gives, but um, it seems like it, it, he wrote it. Let, let me let me get my facts straight here. He wrote, or he he divorced her like fifteen years before he wrote the song, right? Or before he released the song, at the very least, is what it seems like, according to. Uh, well, I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I'm trying to read and also talk at the same time, and my brain cannot do that because I'm horrible at multitasking. <laughs> kind of the song gives me this kind of like one that got away vibe, where he's like he's accepted the divorce and he understands that it needed to happen, but he's also not happy about it, which is a pretty relatable kind of instinct, I think. Yeah, it's what I'm reading it as is they started. He was married for like 15 years and uh, it started with that song, Oh My Dear, I'm Falling in Love. And then 15 years later, it's now ending with I Don't Want It. Oh, like their relationship started. Yeah. Like with that song, I say. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's... That makes a whole lot more sense than him writing this sad love song 15 years after. I did it! I was right about something that somebody <laughs> else was right about. <laughs> well, I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't right about it. Well, you know, I was about to segue, but I'm not. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you, you don't want to segue into some sort of fucked jam. Yeah, the fucked jam is the next song on this <laughs> album. <laughs> this one has like a grittier sound immediately than a lot of the, the album. There's like a, a looping vocal sample that's like altered in just such a way that I have no clue what is being said. And the whole song is just like this 20 second loop that's followed by a few seconds of silence and then it repeats itself kind of thing. There is a little bit of progression to it again, but this is the other track that I think should have been a whole lot shorter than it is. Same here. This is the song that I was saying, yeah, this should have... I mean, I don't know. I was... I didn't think this at first. The first, like, usually when I'm listening to this album, it doesn't feel that long. Yeah. But then the more I listened to the album, the more I was like, because it'll play that loop and then be silent for a few seconds. Yeah, I think that silence really, like, throws throws off your perception of how much time has passed. Yeah, and then I would, like, hear maybe the second silence and be like, okay, the song's done. Nope, okay, it's coming back. (laughs) Yeah. And and then the third, and it's like, okay, now it's done. Nope, it's coming back. And it does that, like... (laughs) <laughs> it's this song's three minutes long, so it just keeps going yeah. back. <laughs> and it's like they're like thirty second loops, like yeah. So it just keeps like repeating itself like four or five times. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I do like it. Yeah, but I, it's just way too long. I think. Yeah, I think it could have been like, uh, hey, they're fancy pants. Like it could have been maybe between like a minute and a half. Yeah. Around there, but you know, it's. It's Ween. What what you gonna do, man? You're gonna you're gonna take it. You're gonna put it in your your CD player. You're gonna take it and drive down Alkin Road. Yeah, Alkin, Alkin, Alkin. Well, it's I don't between... I didn't pay attention to how he was saying it. <laughs> well, it's it's a road that uh, connects America and Canada. So I think it's like, but where does the L come from? Yeah, I don't know. You know, all American road. <laughs> American Loser Canada Road. <laughs> <laughs> Track number 13 is Al- Alkin, Alkin Road. Uh, starts off with some... This this song really like sold me on the last half of the album, I think. Hell yeah. And it starts off with some like very nice scene setting with some like some like wind blowing. There's some like drippy water sounds and ominous scents and then some, some distant kind of sirens or klaxons kind of going on. I think the, the best words to describe the track is just mysterious and distant. Yeah, because it just kind of like that. That's how it feels, and then there's this piercing guitar that comes in. That's like halfway through that really like rounds out the, the songiness of it, where it, it just kind of like it adds a new texture and layer of like melody. That's really nice. Yeah, it's like this song kind of takes me on a journey, where it's like it starts off where there's that silent ambience or whatever, and it's like you're coming out of the ground, like whenever the ambience is going on, or like underwater, like. You're coming up. You're you're breaching the surface, mm-hmm. and now you're above it. And he's describing the world, like the the lyrics in this song and the way he sings it is just very like, I don't not epic in the sense it's like yeah epic, but it's like 
if you were to like it feels very huge like very larger than life the way he's just describing everything very yeah it's really vague and like flowery like it'd be written in an old book or something yeah i, I think it, like the music sets the scene well but also the lyrics it's it's very like descriptive where it's it's just kind of like describing the area around alkin road or whatever and and I, I did no searching intentionally to figure out where or what the Alcan Road is because I feel like it, relating it to a real place seemed like it was kind of going too far for me, and I just wanted to enjoy it for, for what it is kind of a thing. Yeah, I didn't look... Other than finding... Like, I just kind of saw in, that it was... Uh, it connects America and Canada. It was apparently built during World War II, but, like... I don't know how that would relate to the song in any way other than like in Transdermal Celebration where they were talking about dropping like nukes or bombs or something like, I don't know. It kind of, where he's talking about a mushroom cloud in this song, it makes me think that maybe this was a place that was like important from his childhood or a place that was just like sacred to him in a way. And sure. now he's seeing it afterwards. I'm, I'm going to shoot all of that down because oh, I, just, I just Googled. And it makes sense. It, it's Alcan because it's the Alaska Canada Highway. Oh my God! So it's it's Alaska to Canada, and it's nowhere near Pennsylvania or wherever he's from. Oh my God! <laughs> so well, I've I've done no no further research than that, but I was curious now that, that we were talking about it. So maybe, I'm not really sure sure how it all relates. Maybe when he was a kid, he took a trip to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just gotta shove it all together, show all the Legos together, even if they don't fit. <laughs> Somehow it'll work. <laughs> well, I don't have a segue into the next track, but it's called the Argus. You know, you could have gone all Greek mythology on us, Jeremy. And well, I will. I will save that for our discussion of track fourteen, the Argus. <laughs> Hell yeah! So uh, this song, man, I love this song. Like, I really like this song. It's pretty cool. Lot. Like this, I feel like. I don't know, because I love the whole just second half of this album. I don't mm -hmm. want to say this is my favorite song out of the second half, because I don't, I'm not sure if it is, but I just really, really like this song. Sounds like it is. Well, it's going to sound that way for a little bit. But... Oh, so you're saying <laughs> the next track is, because there's only one other track after this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really like the guitar tone in this track. The, uh, the final verse takes some like really interesting musical turns with some, like, piano and keys dancing yeah. around and some higher melodies and stuff, which, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of nice. It's, it kind of gives it, like, an epic feel, which, again, the song's talking about kind of Greek mythology. Uh, I'm curious to hear what you have to say, but before, I'm going to give my description Do it. of what I thought the lyrics meant. And I, I obviously, I don't think I'm, like, too far off or too abstract or whatever, but I feel like the theme of the song is mostly forgiveness, the first line, uh, which is, yesterday we lost our lives, tomorrow we were born, to me implies that the singer had died previously and is going to be born again tomorrow, giving this kind of, like, rebirth theme, which is kind of a metaphor for, like, failing and getting a second chance kind of a thing. Uh, then the song talks about Argus, who was, like, an omniscient figure in Greek mythology who could see everything or was supposed to be watching everything kind of a thing with, a, with his hundreds of eyes or whatever. Uh, the singer is asking if Argus will forgive mankind for their shortcomings, and it seem, they, they imply that Argus is a compassionate being, which implies that he's likely to forgive. And then the last verse comes in, and Argus has failed his own duty of being all-seeing because he fell asleep, and in his dreams, it seems like he's hearing mankind's cry for forgiveness, but it's too late because he's fallen asleep and he's, he's failed the world. Or, or whatever he's supposed to be doing as this kind of omniscient figure, and now he's the one that's seeking forgiveness because he fucked up kind of thing. But in Greek mythology, he actually dies there, and he gets killed because he's protecting yeah. an ox or something. <laughs> yeah. I The ox was apparently another god named Io, who yeah. is like, or a nymph, I guess. I, I'm reading all of this as I'm saying it, so... It, it was, it was uh, I, have, I do not have research pulled up, but when I briefly skimmed it earlier, it was like Zeus's like cattle or something, right? Yeah, it was like Zeus was coupling with Io to like... Wait, Zeus fucked a cow? Is that what you're saying? Well, Io wasn't a cow. It was Io was a nymph disguised as a cow. So he fucked a cow. 
He, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what I'm getting out of. This. If you know anything about Greek mythology, it's that Zeus. We should, it, we should we should involve Pierce. Pierce knows our friend Pierce is a big Greek mythology guy. Well, after we end this, we'll, we'll blow see, him we'll up. See what on, he knows. Yeah, yeah. We'll be like, hey, who's Io? Who's Zeus? Who's Argus? Who's Hermes? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, it was like a whole big thing. Like they were trying to keep Io away from Zeus, disguised as a cow. Argus had to watch over. Io as a cow and like Argus failed because he was tricked and there was all this but like I I think you're right and I think it relates to the rest of the album based on what was set up in the track earlier talking about uh, where it was described as like Dean I'm guessing was the person who was like on on drugs at the time mm-hmm. that like his his partner was sober and that seems to be causing an issue in the relationship or something. And now he is feeling like, I don't know, he maybe was trying to get better or like has failed the other person in the way that like Argus has failed the responsibilities to watch over the cow, which was maybe their relationship. I feel like I'm digging too far into this, but it's just to set up for the next song, I guess. Yeah. I agree. Right. There, there's a kind of a through line that goes to the next track. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's it. I do love this song, like for a lot for the lyrics, like that, or the song, the music, the music, because <laughs> uh, it just keeps like building and building and building, and it's just like during the verse he kind of sings normally, but then the chorus kind of gives him this weighty filter over his voice where it's like it makes yeah. it sound kind of like. I don't know, spacey or whatever. But then that last verse comes in where it's like flutes and it's like you burst into the heavens. Like you're in, you're on Mount Olympus. Like you're up in the sky and it's just like you've burst into the sky through a cloud and it's just like everything's floating and it's just nice. It's pretty, it's a pretty cool song. If, if you could, yeah, I'm not gonna. I yeah, can't. it's, I can't figure it out, man. <laughs> The next track is uh, titled, If You Could Save Yourself, You'd Save Us All. Indeed. Indeed. This one is another kind of like chill rock-ish track, similar to the Argus. This one has a bit more energy in it, at least at the beginning of it. And then there's like some piano and strings that come in that kind of make it feel almost ballady. Uh, One thing of note in this song that kind of caught me off guard and made me laugh is the final chorus. Because when he comes in, there's just like such an unexpected tone and power in his voice for this yeah. last push for the final chorus that just totally caught me off guard and made me laugh. This song, I think, I mean, I like the rest of this album a whole lot, but I don't know if it's just like where I was in my life or what, but like hearing this song to end off the album the first time I listened to it, especially coming after the last few songs like the Argus and Alkin Road and stuff it's just like it's just such a great ending to the album where it's like I don't know I just it's awesome I just like it it's a pretty good ending it's uh I don't yeah it just kind of builds throughout the whole song it it starts off like with just like some piano and it's just kind of about it it's kind of rock ballady yeah. whatever and then at the end he does he just ends up fucking just belting it like he's just like yelling not yeah, he I, goes a lot harder in that last chorus than he does on the entire album yeah and it's like that's the thing it's not like you heard him go hard on it's gonna be a long night this is completely different this is yeah, like yeah yeah this is like the emotional type of belting i guess rather than the rock type of belting or something yeah where he's just like he's just a dude singing loudly like emotionally i guess but it's just nice it is it's it's a pretty good pretty good ending lyrically i felt like the song was about his ex and i don't know if i was trying to connect it too hard but it sounds like you had kind of a similar thing um but it, it seemed like he was talking about how he has tried so hard to save her and she just didn't care and she like kicked him while he was down kind of a thing uh which to, to expand upon, I think, might be me projecting a little bit, but it, it seems like he's the kind of guy that wants to help people he loves to grow and overcome their problems to the point where it's physically exhausting him 
and a lot of the time those people don't grow or change because change has to come from within yeah uh, as, as painful as it is for him to acknowledge that like seeing a loved one struggling with an issue and not being able to help them because they're not trying to help themselves kind of thing just really like it, it takes the wind out of your sails yeah yeah it's it kind of like tied back to a few other songs where it's like i don't want it something we didn't necessarily touch on but it's like the song's called i don't want it and right. the song's about divorce it's like he's obviously saying he don't want he doesn't want it but right before that the line in the song is i understand it but right. i don't want it so he's like accepting he's like i i get where you're coming from or i get what's i get why this is needing to happen or yeah, what but it still hurts yeah and so he's like being pretty level-headed in that and that coupled with him being pretty i mean this whole album has been like laced with references to using drugs and being mm -hmm. like having an issue with drugs so i can only imagine that <clears throat> like a divorce at a point like that in your life is like getting kicked when you're already down. Yeah. But to, to be fair, understanding like if, if you're a sober person trying to live your life with a partner who's fallen into extreme drug addiction, like I can, I'm sure that's extremely hard. And yeah. there, there comes a point where you're just like, I gotta just get out. Mm -hmm. But then like, if you're trying to maybe, I mean, if he was working really tr hard trying to fix it or whatever, but just the last lines in the song being, I, like, I thought you needed my help to make it good again, to make us strong, to make you happy, to push you along, and to gain some respect, to be thrown a crumb. I was on my knees when you knocked me down, and he's just like belting it. It's just yeah. like intense. It's a, it's a. It's just like this this feeling of like anguish from trying so hard to save something. And then to just be totally and like utterly just removed from that and being yeah. just being wronged. It's it's good. It's a good ending. <laughs> it's sad. It's a sad boy ending. Yeah. But it's that life, makes it good. Man. Life is sad. Yeah. Life All the way up until the end. <laughs> That's why you take drugs throughout everything. Don't take drugs. Don't do drugs. If you have a drug problem, I'm, I'm, get, try, try to be better. Yeah. So it's just, hard. <laughs> or just do the right kind of drugs, you know, in the right amount, moderation. There you go. Don't, don't, do, don't do anything that's like, I mean. Probably lay off heroin. Yeah. Or just any <laughs> other like deeply. Or if you know you're prone to that, just maybe, maybe either use extreme caution or uh, just don't stay away. I know it probably sucks to see, to be like, oh, but you can go out there and smoke or drink or whatever and yeah be fine and not have an issue with it but i can't it's like yeah, yeah that, that totally that's a big sucks. like that's a big part of a lot of like alcoholism and like people that are that have recovered from alcoholism i guess just being able to to have that knowledge and strength to to withstand even being around people yeah that drink because you know that it's kind of like a, a doorway right back into it and you know that if you see someone else drinking that you're going to want to drink and kind of thing so kudos to you if you're sober and have conquered that and are capable of keeping yourself out of that kind of trouble and if you're going through that right now fucking good on you keep keep trying it doesn't necessarily get easier but you got to keep doing it yeah i've uh i mean not necessarily relating to uh hard drugs or anything right but i i quit smoking a long time ago back when i was having a a child mm -hmm. and uh i know a lot of people can relate to this it doesn't get any easier but yeah you just gotta do it you learn to live with it at some point and yeah. it's just it's a struggle i'm sure it's even more so for hard drugs for <laughs> sure yeah Pro probably so <laughs> but uh on a on a different note getting out of the the too real for me kind of discussions overall this album is pretty hit and miss with me. Like a lot of it isn't super relatable to me and the music isn't something that I would regularly listen to. And I would definitely not put this album on as a full album experience. Like you said, you do. I, th I like a handful of the songs on it and I really like the last like half to third of the album kind of a thing. It's a lot vibier coming in or a lot vibier than I anticipated when I was coming into the album, but there there's not a lot that's like 
super memorable or notable to me as like an album so like if i were to listen to songs on this album it would just be those songs and not the full album well i'm the opposite but i'm glad you listened to it with me me too man i'm glad we were able to do this podcast just for we've been doing this for almost a year now yeah just Tec- listen- technically over a year yeah I guess, I guess that's true yeah we've been releasing them for a year now but we have yeah. been recording them for longer not much longer. Not much longer. <laughs> so we're just going to ignore it. But it's fucking awesome. I, I love doing this. I love sharing music with you. And next week, the album that I'm sharing with you is just called Two. Yay! By the Presidents of the United States of America. Long-winded name for a band. They're kind of like, uh, I don't want to say nerd rock, but it, it's kind of, it, it's rock music. that uh, You'll figure it out. You, you know what the Presidents are, Joey, anyway. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't if if anyone else does not know about the presence of the United States of America, their big hits were like uh, Peaches and Lump and stuff like that. So you've probably heard them in passing at the very least. If not, boy, do you have a surprise in for you next week? A or good surprise, week, a good one, because I really fucking love them as a band. It it's been such a struggle for me today to figure out which album I want to pick. <laughs> and I even asked, I, I sent the album titles to Joey and it's like, which one of these appeals to you more? He chose one and I'm not doing that one. <laughs> so I, I don't know what I was hoping to gain by sending him the three that I had picked out, but we're doing the one called two. It is their second release and we're going to be listening to that this week and talking about it next week. If you guys want to uh, let us know how you feel about this Ween album, if you're a wiener or if you have notes that say that we're wrong about songs, please send them to us. Leave leave us some comments. Discuss with us. We we want to have some some open communication with you guys, uh, and we're we're kind of taking steps towards maybe making that easier for people that listen. But we also don't have a lot of listeners, so it's kind of disheartening sometimes <laughs> to, to spend a lot of effort to try and fix things. But uh, we're getting there. You find us on all of your podcast platforms. We're on all the social media stuff. Drop us some comments. Give us some support. Give us some hatred. You know, give us something, man. Anything. Anything at all. <laughs> but whatever good or positive notes you have for us, stay in our feedback loop. Bye.